This is Michelle Plowman. I'm from Aiken, and I'm a retired school teacher. Uh, and I, um, I do speak Spanish. I was a Spanish teacher, but I lived in Mexico for a while. But I love to talk, so I figured I needed to know how to say thank you or other sorts of things in other languages. So um, I want to I want to take something from Ephesians to start with, uh, and in the in the Ephesians, I don't chapter two. I don't remember what verses. Uh, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms of Christ, in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ. And that struck me because one of the things that's important about mission interpreters is that we, are, um, we, we lift up the kinds of things that we do in kindness and in love of God for other people. And so I went to the definition of kindness, and kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate, and, at, and we are to pass it on. And that's what happens at first at uh, Salem here, um, and in the Synod and in the ELCA. It's a very loving, compassionate, caring church, and I'm so, I'm so happy to be part of it for lots of different ways. And I grew up in another, in a different faith, Christian, but I have fallen in love with ELCA for so many reasons. So, um, so what I want to do is I want to talk about what um, the ELCA thinks of and what the, Synod, what the mission interpreters are. Um, so ELCA ministry is the many ways to serve Christ. What a mission interpreter does is that we tell the story of Christ's love in our world through our gifts and offerings. And Salem Lutheran is a very, very good example of how you all follow what Christ wants you to do. And I did some, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about your church and then about the Synod and then just touch on one thing or two things in the ELCA church that you may not know. Um, so what does a mission interpreter do? We tell the story of how the congregation's offerings are turned into effective ministry. It's not just throwing money at something to, I mean, it's, we, yeah, we need carpets and we need things like that, but we go beyond that. I've been in a church where the most important thing they voted on was the color of the carpet, and that was sad to me. Um, it reminds everyone how together uh, we make a difference for Christ's mission and the work in the world. Um, my husband and I are also in Lions, and one of the things, they're called the Knights of the Blind, because... Um, uh, What's her name? Uh, pardon? Keller. Helen Keller. Thank you, Don. Helen Keller said, uh, by ourselves we can do some, a little, but together we can do so much. And that's what happens in a church like this. Because I couldn't do the things that you all can do by myself, but, or you couldn't do it individually, but together we do so much. And um, another thing that we do as mission interpreters is we thank you for all that you do so much of what you do is so important through your giving, through temple. So we will come to churches and do temple talks or sermons or just whatever it is that, that a mission interpreter can do to help encourage and keep this going. So, um, and I'm looking for someone within your church that could be your mission interpreter that just keeps these things in front of your, your church uh, to remind you of the things that we do. So, uh, one of the things that Let's see, did I go? Oh, I went too far. So one of, so I want to talk to you about how important these things are that you do, and I'm sure most of you know all this stuff. But in case you don't, Salem West is your signature outreach, and you, um, it's amazing. You didn't let a fire destroy what you believed in. So thank you for that. That's amazing. You should be thanking each other for what you do. Um, there are people who have a better life because of you. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. There aren't a lot of churches that do this sort of thing, so thank you for that. Um, the mustard seed and the gift shop, that's one way that you can... Actually, I'm really glad for places like that because I have stuff that my kids don't want anymore, but maybe somebody else does. So I'm glad that you have a place to, to redistribute things like that. So thank you so much for that. Um, Habitat for Humanity, Man, that's really, really an important thing. So thank you for, for what you do with, with the Habitat, because that's a great organization 
to be involved in. This actually is something that I really, really want to thank you for. I have a nephew who's been in prison um, off and on for the, he's 50 years old and at least 30 years of his life he's been in and out of prison. And there, um, he is out now. Thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. Uh, and he is never going to go back. But one of the things that helped get him out and keep him, and keep him out is the fact that there was a prison ministry that came to him and, let, and helped him understand that God loves him, and he became baptized. And I'm just so thrilled and so thankful that you do this. You don't have any idea. I mean, and I don't think it would be easy to necessarily um, find the time to go because it takes time and it takes effort, and, you know, then you have to. But thank you for that. Please keep on doing that. Um, I would like to see my church. I know that our pastors do it, but I think, I think it would be really good for us to be part of that. So after I'm done with some of the, the things that I do, I'd like to get involved with that, especially for Kelly. Oh, thank you, God. Um, the soup kitchen, that's a really special thing. We don't know. I, I have to tell you, I've never been hungry. I mean, not really hungry. And I don't, I've always known where my food was coming from. But this is something where you can help people who have no idea where the next thing is coming from. So your church is doing amazing things, not just in, not just outside of the church, but also within the church. Um, the youth, and we know how important they are. I was a high school teacher, and just to know all the things that, the, that students need in their lives, thank you for helping them with the youth, with your quilt, um, your quilt ministry. All the stuff you do in the side of the church is great, too. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to go talk to you a little bit about the Synod. And one of the things that uh, mission interpreters are really, um, the reason it's kind of important to have this, the, the ministry that I'm involved with, and I'm the coordinator for the whole Synod, plus I do uh, some mission interpreter th stuff for our church. We're just starting out, kind of. We, um, uh, a mission interpreter, and I'll explain a little bit later what your church, a person here in the church could do. Um, but um, when you, I can remember when I was on church council, you know, the, why do we have to give this money to the, to the synod? I, you know, what do they need this for? Their salaries? You know, they probably get paid big bucks. Their building? <laughs> well, in Duluth, if you've ever seen their building, it's the second floor. There's metal steps going up to the top. There are little offices. They, it's not a building, I can tell you that. There's no money going to that building, hardly. It's not even a built. They don't even own the building. They just, own, they just rent spaces. But they take care of the youth. They do all these events. We have one of the best youth um, ministries in the United States because we do we have so many things that the youth people can the youth can be involved in that bring them cl closer to Christ so thank you for that part of it and as a as a teacher i know i can tell the difference with kids who have faith in their lives and faith that, and those that don't um, so where does it go where are some of the things it goes it's not just for office support uh, how many of you guys know about um, the Center for Changing Lives. Do you know about that? A couple of you do? Uh, this is a project that's been taken care of now, but it, or it's finally built. There's a building for, as an outreach for homeless, people, homeless kids in Duluth. Now, there's also some shelters in Brainerd that you probably support, but because this is in our synod, this is something that we supported. And they finally built, finally got this building. Have you been in the building? <gasps> Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. It overlooks Lake Superior. I would like to live there. It's so beautiful. I mean, it's got uh, the top floor is for, um, for homeless youth. They've got a kitchen. They have washer dryers. They have little cubicle rooms. They have this beautiful, gorgeous uh, open windows, you know, light shining in. The second floor has apartments where once that are low income and you can stay there as long as you have a job and it's just and then the first floor is 
are the offices and then some other places for outreach. You know, like there's a, a clinic in there and there's a place for high school kids to come and have things. So this is amazing. This is an amazing building. If you ever have a chance to go the, up to Duluth, it's, it's really, it, it doesn't serve as many people as they'd like, but it does serve some. Um, one of the things that your money goes for is to help with seminary debt relief. And you know that uh, we are, we're really, we really need pastors because uh, young people to become pastors. But it costs a lot of money. So they can get some, um, they get some, some help with, their, with their, um, their tuition and things like that with their debt. Oops, sorry. How many of you know about the seafarers? Do you know about seafarers? This is the cool, this is where speaking another language would be wonderful. When the ships come in um, to the harbor in Duluth, the seafarers is a there's, a, there's a building and they have uh, places where they have, um, um, whoops, sorry. I gotta quit pushing my things here, don't I? There we are. No, back. <laughs> ah, okay. There. <laughs> so, um, so there are people who volunteer to go out to the ships and help and find out what you know. If there, sometimes the people can't get off the ships to come in for uh, to go shopping or to get things that they may, may need. These are people. These are sea, sailors from all over the world. Uh, so they'll go out and see what kind of needs they have. Sometimes if they can leave the ship, they'll bring them in and take them up to M Miller Hill Mall and let, take them shopping and buy stuff for them, get them to doctor's appointments, dental appointments. Eye, they help them make eye care appointments. They take care of these, these people that have nobody here, that are six months away from home, and the reason that they're on the ship is because that's their soul, they're helping support their families. So they. They will uh, take them into the center and, and plug them into a, not plug them in, but get them um, uh, connected but with the internet so they can send messages to their families or even Skype and be able to see their families. Back in, uh, there's people from Russia and the Philippines. Those are some of the two main groups of people that come. So you donate money. When you give benevolence, some of that goes to the center to help those people. So you're, you're actually affecting by when you give money to benevolence, you're actually helping people on the other side of the world in ways, in ways that you couldn't imagine. <clears throat> I presume most of you women maybe know about PV for Phoebe. Do you know that? Do you know what it is? <clears throat> and I'm sure you maybe even give money yourselves independently. Um, and I think this is um, photo photo, how do you pronounce it, photo, photovoltaic microgrid. What this means is there's a solar panels and it keeps the hospital going. Up until this was set up through us, especially our synod, because we're the ones who kind of started it, some of the people in our synod, um, now they can, have, they can have lights at night. They were using a generator, but to get to this hospital, especially in the rainy season, the ruts are this deep. You think we have bad ruts? That's horrid. And so now they can keep the lights on all the time because of this project. So thank you. Thank you for this. It's making a change on that part of the world in Liberia. Um, <clears throat> this is probably one of my favorite things about the ELCA. It's called accompaniment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Accompaniment is walking together let me look at it this way. A company is defined as walking together in a solidarity that practices interdependence and mutuality. Basically, there, we have three companion synods with, uh, with Northeastern Minnesota Synod. One in Honduras, one in Russia, and one in India. And what that means, you're, you remember in the old days, and especially if you ever, how many of you ever remember seeing the movie Hawaii with Julie Andrews in it, and, or reading the book or anything like that? Um, I remember watching that thinking how sad because 
we used to go into as, as missionaries and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. You do it this way. And they never actually got the people who it was going to um, affect involved. And there was resentment, and there was, you know, sometimes it worked out, but sometimes it wasn't. It didn't work out. So now with, the, with accompaniment, we will go to a place that we know we, they want us there. First of all, that's part of it. We offer services to people and help them. And we go and we say, what is it we can do to help you? But they make sure that it's their need and their, their way of doing things. So we would put in, uh, I have a sister-in-law who was in the Peace Corps, and she helped in, I think it was in this one particular town they were in, and they, they put in a well, but there was no way to generate electricity. So what good was that well? They had no, you know, they didn't have the money to do all the other things it needed to keep that well going. So now, in the same way, there's another place where there's, there's, um, there's rain, during the rainy season, everything washes away. Well, what happens now is we have gone in with, that, with the help of the people and built, built um, put in, planted trees and things like that to help keep that rain from washing down and, and destroying crops and building terraces and things. But we've done it with them. They do a lot of the work. We just help with whatever technology that we know would help in the time. So that's what accompaniment means. We're not coming and saying, we're going to lead you. We're walking beside you. And that's an amazing thing to me. So uh, we, oops, this way. So one of the places is in Honduras, OK? And you guys are doing shoes. And that's, that's awesome. I lived in Mexico. And, uh, and I lived with a family that was you know, a, a middle-class family. But you'd go to villages, and you'd see um, kids running around without shoes on. And I mean, maybe that was because they wanted to. But if they don't have them, that's hard. Uh, another one is in Russia. And uh, that one's just beginning. It's kind of small, because, but the, but, uh, the website has uh, how they're expanding and growing. Uh, and the other one is in, um, is in India. And we have uh, the vice president of our Synod Council, um, Brenda Wagner, and her husband have gone there several times to India. And the people from India have come and uh, visited our Synod assemblies. And it's a really powerful companionship that's going on with that church. So in the world, we are doing so many things. Uh, the mosquito, you guys remember when we did the mosquito, um, the mosquito nets and things like that? Did you, you did some of that, maybe? The mosquito netting or some of the things to help eradicate um, some of the, the diseases that are mosquito-borne. There's a story that, one of my favorite stories is about uh, a man in Africa, and I, I think it was Malawi. And his story is that when his baby was born, his, his little girl was born, he looked at that baby and he looked on her with joy because he knew that she, because of the mosquito netting and the other things that are in, her, in his village now, she would probably live to be an adult. Whereas before, like three years before, if he had a baby, he would look with sadness knowing that there's a very possibility that that child might not make it past the one year of age. That's because of what we did with the ELCA going to other countries. And I could tell you story after story after story of what your money does to help in ways that you have no idea. Because not only when you send money to the, syn to the synod, some of that gets passed on. They don't keep all of the money. They pass it on to the wider church so that they can, they can do the things that we can't do in Deerwood, little church in Deerwood. We couldn't do that. So together we can do so much. So a mission interpreter, I want to thank you for your proclamation of love, for your generous giving of your time, talent, and treasures to mission support. Uh, 
I thank your congregations for the services that you do, as I've shown, reaching out locally in the community in the synod and globally in the world. So I'd like to have you join me in prayer as we say this together. Holy Father God, help us to recognize the purpose you have given to us and the power you have placed within us to accomplish life's goals. Help us to respond with gratitude, using our gifts and talents to the fullest and best of our ability, not just for ourselves, but for the benefits of others. Open our eyes and our hearts to see the needs of others and to show love, support, and encouragement to our fellow brothers and sisters in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. So, thank you for letting me talk to you about um, sharing with you the message today of God's love. And I have some brochures. If anybody is all interested in, in doing something with this, uh, we, give, we provide support. And um, I help you through things. And so if you, or if you know someone who might be interested, I have a few brochures. And uh, so, thank you. <laughs>